Welcome back to the St. Emily Podcast, where we're focusing on St. Joseph and we're consecrating our lives to him. I'm Father Hank Lyon, and with me this morning is Melissa Haidu. Melissa, how are we doing? Good morning, Father. I'm doing great today and hope everyone is doing well and enjoying the readings. Absolutely. And we are diving right into the next set of three days, seven, eight, and nine. We hope it's been very fruitful reading and getting to know St. Joseph. Um, I'll kick us off this morning looking at day seven. Um, beautifully named Holy Mary, pray for us. Again, following that litany to St. Joseph. So something that grasped my mind and attention is that St. Joseph was a man who had a heart dedicated to the Virgin Mary, uh, dedicated to his wife. And um, I think this is so beautiful. Um, you know, we hear about consecrations to the Virgin Mary and here just kind of within tradition, within the scripture and within just natural human life, here is a man living, you know, as the turning into the new covenant, um, a man that was dedicated to the Virgin Mary. Um, so I think it's ground to give us uh, trust and a good reason to uh, to pray to Our Lady, to have devotion to her, um, and also to kind of see within their relationship this great heroic chivalry, which Melissa, you had some wonderful insights on. I'd like to turn the table to you. Oh, okay. Um, I was... Joseph increases our love for Mary as well. And um, as Father Calloway said earlier in the book, if you consecrate yourself to Mary and consecrate yourself to Joseph, they're not opposing things. They kind of go hand in hand. And I just feel that Mary and Joseph are such the perfect intercessors for us um, because I, they complement each other. And I, I heard recently a Father Boniface Hicks talking about Joseph and how he was the best of carpenters and he built things and he rebuilt things from ruins or from the bare minimum. And so that's his contribution. And Mary, I always heard, makes things very beautiful and, and puts a womanly touch on it. So when we have Joseph and Mary as our intercessors, it's like the perfect team. It's a perfect pair because Joseph helps us build our prayers or our intentions and puts them together. He helps us gather our thoughts into good foundations. And then Mary paints them beautifully, makes them beautiful and presentable to the Lord and presents them to the Lord. And I just think it's such a beautiful combination having both of them as our intercessors. Absolutely, and I think it's a beautiful witness of the complementarity of men and women, our gifts, uh, natural to us, and they just give the fullness of, of life and, and all that you know, working together can really show I think it's helpful too, and if you know, if you're someone out there that you feel like your life is is broken or in disrepair, or your relationship with God has been broken by something, you know, go to Saint Joseph, who's a builder. He could go through. Um, I know my own father; he's a, a bit of a, a woodman or a craftsman in his own right, and he can see any kind of um, just simple pallet wood that you would discard, you know, kind of rough around the edges and stuff. Yeah, he can turn into a beautiful piece of furniture too. So St. Joseph, you know, if we feel like our spiritual life is kind of broken or in, in disarray, turn to St. Joseph, pray to him, asking, you know, his intercession to kind of put the pieces back together to watch over you. And then Our Lady to, to show you your beauty in God's eyes and to, you know, have her clothe you with her mantle. Uh, that is so beautiful. Uh, moon into day eight. Um, something that struck me, it's kind of a wonderful thing that Father Calloway presents to us and kind of expands our our minds, our theological minds. He talks about St. Joseph as a new Adam. I just want to pump the little theological breaks there just a little bit. Um, it, nothing wrong with that title, but just as a reminder that Christ, and Father Calloway does get into this, Christ is the new Adam, right? He starts a new, the, the new uh, creation of humanity. If Adam was the first human being, Christ is the first in this new order of creation. Through our, our baptism, we participate in the new humanity that has this intimate living with the divine nature uh, by the gift of our baptism, the Holy Spirit. So Christ is the new Adam. Uh, through one, uh, sin and death came into the world. Through the new Adam, life, eternal life, and forgiveness of sins come through him. So that's my little theological soapbox of cautionary tales. <laughs> but moving on, uh, St. Joseph as a new Adam. Adam was also the head of his family. Um, he was supposed to you know, provide and care for Eve and to look over his sons and everything. Um, kind of, if you will, the, the base design of all of humanity 
is to have a head and then uh, the support. You can kind of think of one of my favorite, favorite lines in my big fat Greek wedding. I said, yes, the, the, the father might be the head of the family, but the mother is the neck. And the neck can turn the head any way it wants. So um, I love that. And it's always good to have, um, you know, St. Joseph and uh, as a head and um, that, and also with uh, St. Joseph to see in his life, he was the first one to kind of experience in this, okay, a new Adam, new Christ, new covenant, um, that our lives as Catholics, we put ourselves so closely to Jesus and the Virgin Mary. And here again is St. Joseph, the first one to really reap the fruit of that experience of living in such an intimate life with, with Mary and Jesus. Um, so those are my two cents from day eight. Melissa, what were some of your insights from day um, eight? One real uh, wonderful point and a gem to me was on page 89 uh, when I was with uh, Peter going through his study to be a, a deacon. This is one of the, the things that really was a big light bulb to me, how Father Calloway explains um, you know, our, our reverence our adoration for God and then reverence for the saints. And um, so he explains Latria, Dulia, um, and Hyperdulia. Uh, I, I really urge you to take a look at that and, and really delve into that. I think it's important. It's a good thing for um, when our Protestant brothers and sisters kind of question us of, you know, giving so much devotion to the saints or to Mary. And this is kind of a way of explaining it. I never heard of the Protodulia, which is the first revered, revered for St. Joseph, but that's a beautiful, beautiful concept. So I, I really enjoyed that he, he put that in his book there because I think that's something that um, some of us just don't know or discover later. Uh, the other thing that stood out to me in, um, in day eight was that Joseph, one of his titles, is the patron of the Universal Church. I think this is really... Um, important because we think Jesus is 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 God and Mary was born without sin to be a pure vessel for Christ but Joseph was a, a man a person just like the rest of us um, very virtuous obviously but but he was born with sin and all and so are all of us so for him to be the symbol of or the patron of the universal church just like the rest of us in this universe um, I think it makes sense, and he's also the model for us all because he was a man and he lived a virtuous life, and so it's he's a good person to look up to and and to uh, strive to be an apparition of Saint Joseph, as Father Calloway mentioned before. Absolutely, and for those of you who may not be following along with the book, um, a little bit of what Melissa's sharing with Latria, Hyperdulia, Protodulia, and Dulia um, is the. The great richness of the Greek language. So Latra is pure adoration that is reserved solely to God. Hyperdulia is highest reverence. So as Catholics, we give that to Mary. Protodulia is first revered. Uh, we give that to St. Joseph. And Dulia is reverence for, for all the saints um, to give them honor and such. Um, so you can kind of think of it as kind of the chain of command in the military, who you would give highest ranking honor to and such. But of course, adoration alone belongs to God. Um, so that's our little soapbox on that. Um, day nine. Going into day nine, something that stood out for me is the recognition of St. Joseph's royal lineage. Kind of this hidden noble uh, figure in the New Testament, kind of, if you will, Aragon in Lord of the Rings. If I can put on a little Lord of the Rings action there. Um, so it's significant and it's a really needed reminder of St. Joseph. Uh, for St. Joseph from the angel to call him son of David. Call to mind that this moment that's happening and taking place, not only in your life, but especially in the Virgin Mary's life, is this beginning of the new covenant, the coming of the Messiah. And it's needed for St. Joseph to call to mind that he has a role to play. He has this royal lineage, and that needs to be given over to Jesus too through the legal marriage between him and the Blessed Mother. And so... It's necessary because the throne of David can only be occupied by a rightful heir uh, to the throne. So that Jesus becomes a rightful heir through this uh, royal lineage as being a son of Joseph. Um, and also, my last little comments with this is that it's uh, beautiful, the, the relationship that David and the Ark has. 
and St. Joseph in the, has with the Blessed Mother. So if we go back to 2 Samuel, which Father Callie references, there's a scene where King David is unsure about bringing the Ark of God um, into the temple or into uh, his kingdom. So briefly in 2 Samuel, they're moving, they're transporting the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, um, something on, it, on the cart hits a rock perhaps, and it goes a little, starts tilting. So a good steward comes and puts his hand on the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, to steady it, right intention. Um, but you're not supposed to touch the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, God forbid. And so God smites the steward, dead. And the steward dies right there on the trail, and King David is, is horrified, as, as you and I would rightfully be horrified too if we saw this. And so he, he says to himself, how shall I? He asks, gives shelter to the Lord's Ark. We can hear an echo of St. Joseph. How can I take the Virgin Mary into my home? Who, The, the saints um, really have this sense of St. Joseph that he wasn't scandalized by the Virgin Mary's pregnancy, but was to some extent aware to some degree of the holiness that was taking place in the Virgin Mary, that this is from God. And he just felt this unworthiness of who is he to take into his home, essentially the new ark of the new covenant, since Mary holds in her womb uh, Jesus himself, God's presence among us. So uh, just kind of a beautiful echo of Joseph and his ancestors there. Uh, Melissa, for yourself, what were some insights from uh, Father, Day Father, just the only thing I would just also point out, is, as you did, that um, it's only fitting that Jesus came from the line of David, who was a king, um, Jesus is God and man, and so he's the son of God, the, the universal king or the king of everything, if, if that's what you want to say it. Um, so that's his heavenly father, but then his earthly father also came from a line of kings. So as a God and man, Jesus came from kings. Uh, and also, I, I think that um, when you talked about the ark, uh, and I, I love that title of Mary, the Ark of the Covenant. It's so beautiful to me. But um, David, for a time, sent the car, Ark away because he just wasn't sure if he was worthy. And same thing with Joseph. He wasn't sure if he was worthy, but he listened to the angel telling him that this was his job, that he was to, to marry uh, the Virgin Mary and to be the foster father of Jesus or to raise Jesus as his son. And so he accepted Mary, the Ark of the New Covenant, and he listened to what God was telling him through the angels, where sometimes David, I'm not saying Joseph always listened to everything, but sometimes David did not, and that's when he got True. himself into trouble. True. And folks, if, um, if, if you ever feel a sense in your heart that I'm not worthy to receive God's mercy, I'm not worthy to receive all these blessings of you know, St. Joseph's intercession and Jesus' richness of his life and, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, know that that's, that's not from the Holy Spirit. And also, too, don't be afraid, as St. Joseph was encouraged not to be afraid. And hear the message of the angel. Hear the message of your spiritual father. Don't be afraid to welcome these blessings into your life. Welcome Jesus' mercy and forgiveness into your life. And that, yes, we are called to grow in holiness, and we're totally capable of it with God's grace and help, and certainly through St. Joseph's intercession. So on that note, let us invoke uh, St. Joseph, our spiritual father, and pray to him the litany of St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Noble offspring of David. Pray for us. Light of patriarchs. Pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Pray for us. Joseph most just. Pray for us. Joseph most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph most courageous. Pray for us. Joseph most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. 
Pray for us. Model of workmen. Pray for us. Glory of domestic life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of demons. Pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household. And Prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose Blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us, folks. We hope you're, uh, you're diving deeper into your spiritual life with St. Joseph and reaping these wonderful fruits. Join us next time for the next uh, rendition of Diving Deeper into Our Consecration. I'm Father Hank, and with me as always is Melissa Haidu, wishing you the best. Go to Joseph. Take care.